would, take your Bibles out. We are going to be in Colossians chapter 3 this morning. And you are probably thinking, this is not the time where the message is supposed to take place. It is today. Okay? Um, and there's a reason for that. It's not an arbitrary thing. Um, the, this Sunday and the past Sunday, we're talking about one particular issue, and that issue is worship. And, and the past Sunday, we talked about uh, what worship is, and who it is that we worship, and that it's not so much about the style of worship that's important in the church, because there's a lot of different styles of worship, and I can get down with almost all of them. Um, but it's the substance of worship that is of the utmost importance. And we talked about how uh, since Jesus is everything He says He is, that worship should naturally flow from us. And we worship Him because He is Lord. We worship Him because He is Creator. We worship Him because He is near to us. That's what we spent last week talking about. Okay? The, the why it is that we worship and the who it is that we worship. This week is going to be a little bit more practical. It's going to be how do we worship? Because those are the questions that uh, uh, a lot of times we, uh, we, we don't answer. We, we say, okay, we ought to be doing this. But then we never answer the question, okay, how is it that I do this? This is why I open with the kids and the, and the guitar. You know, I can want to play that guitar as much as anybody in this room, and I really do want to play guitar. But I have to take the time to learn how to do it. Otherwise, what I offer up to you would just be awful. You would, you would sit here and think, why would he embarrass himself in that manner, okay? But if I really want to play guitar, I've got to spend the time, okay? And that got me thinking uh, this week. Um, I have the blessing to be able to go over to Mina on Friday and go to Resonate. If you guys haven't been over to Resonate, uh, Resonate is a ministry started by Josh Husby. Uh, and it's a, just an evening of worship over at First Baptist in Mina. And uh, there are people from all ages that just come there just to worship Jesus on a Friday night. And uh, it's amazing how the Lord shows up every time that I go over there. And this time was no different. And, uh, but what I noticed this time was um, my children. Because we don't always take our kids over there. Sometimes resonate as date night for, for Nicole and I. Where we can just go. We can just and worship together. But we took the kids this time. <clears throat> and as we're right in the middle of this worship set, and, and Josh and his band are incredible, I'm praising the Lord at the top of my lungs. I got my hands raised, my eyes closed, because right there, I don't care what anybody else around me is doing. And I open my eyes, and I look down, and my 10-month-old is sitting in her uh, stroller, watching the band in front, clapping, praising the Lord. And I couldn't help but think how true the scripture is where it says that God has placed eternity in our hearts. And no, she doesn't know everything that's going on there. But what she does know is that there was joy that was filling that room. And that joy infected her heart. So much so that she felt like she needed to come. She responded to the presence of God in that place. And it was just an incredible moment. But more than that, also on that evening, as I'm singing, I glance over to my left, and my two sons are next to me. And I look at them, and they have their hands raised, and they are singing to Jesus. Why were they doing that? Because they saw their dad. As, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but as we grow, as we become older, things become more difficult for us. And one of those things is, is expre expressing our emotion, expressing our affections, especially in worship, I've noticed this, um, especially in Baptist circles. 
and I'm not saying that everybody has to be hand raisers. I'm not saying everybody has to <coughs> sing at the top of their lungs, but man, we learn how to worship from watching other people. And I remember when I was a kid, there were people in my life that used to say things like, kids are to be seen and not heard. That had consequences, okay? One of those consequences was I rarely talked as a kid. What I was told was I'm just supposed to be quiet. Um, the other thing that I was told as a kid was that I should do as adults say, not as they do. And that frustrated me, okay? Because it was an inconsistent message. And I think that type of thinking has infiltrated the church in regards to worship. Because we will tell kids, we have to honor the Lord with our lives. But then we don't do it. Okay? And I'm not talking about just Sunday morning. Because worship is far more than the songs we sing. Does it or the songs that we sing in here? Worship is a lifestyle. And in Colossians chapter 3, the Lord reveals to us what worship would look like in a real practical sense, if we took our faith seriously. And, and this is what I want to share with you this morning. It comes from uh, chapter 3. This passage begins in verse 12 and moves through verse 17. And the Word of God says this. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body we are called to peace and be thankful and let the message of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through songs and hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through Him. In this passage, we see three things that I want to share with you specifically about worship. The first of which is, how do we worship? This is a question that uh, we struggle with in church because we make it into a, a stylistic thing instead of a lifestyle thing. Okay? We will say, you are a contemporary church, and we don't believe in that. We believe that the only good music given was those who uh, was given to those who wrote the hymns in the 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th century. And if you uh, dare to use drums or a, or a guitar in your worship set, then this is not honoring to the Lord. And I say that type of thinking is not honoring to the Lord because worship is more than what we do on Sunday morning. Worship is a lifestyle. But how is it that we worship God? I think in this first passage, verse 12 to 14, the Holy Spirit tells us we worship God primarily through two means. Through a servant's heart and through a sacred affection. He says, therefore, now that's very important that we don't just jump over that part. Therefore, because what's before it? Uh, Paul talks to this Colossian church. And the Colossians, if you don't know about the Colossians, they have lost their way. They were a very worldly church. And most of the epistle is a rebuke to them and an encouragement to come back to the God who they fell in love with in the beginning. And, and he said, uh, therefore, because God has uh, done everything for you, Jesus laid down his life so that you can live, and he has raised you to new life. Uh, set aside these worldly desires. Uh, set aside this sexual immorality that's inundating your culture. Set aside drunkenness. Set aside all the vices that are just taking down your culture. Set aside those things because you have been raised to new life in Christ. And therefore, because this has happened, 
as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. How is it that we worship? We worship God with a servant's heart. Why do we worship Him in that way? Because that's what He has done for us. He says, you are God's chosen people. Lose sight of that. It wasn't a random accident that you find yourself here this morning. If you are in Christ, it was not a random accident that you fell into the kingdom of God. Okay? And it wasn't as if there was this line of people strung up through all of eternity and God walked by and said, you, 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 and you, you're in. Everybody else is out. Isn't that? God had this plan and purpose. He had you in mind. He pursued you to the ends of the earth, some of you, to bring you back to himself. Okay? You are chosen and dearly loved. It means that no matter what anybody says in this earth, that you have a great significance. There is a profound meaning to your life, and that meaning is found in Him. And when we find what that meaning is and we pursue after Him, we not only uh, find great joy, but we choose our lives as an act of worship. Have you ever met a person who is just filled with joy all the time? I have. Uh, the guy I think of is K.O. Grove. Caleb Rupp, I don't know that that guy has an enemy. Okay? I don't know that I've seen a time where Caleb doesn't have a smile on his face. Okay? I don't know if I have a better friend than Caleb Rupp. And the reason I say that is because Caleb Rupp lives a life of worship. Okay? Caleb is not the guy who's going to... Um, sit across from a table with me and talk through just these profound concepts of theology. But this is what Caleb will do. He will take the shirt off of his back and give it to me. And we give it to anyone. Why? Because he serves the Lord, well, worships the Lord with the servant's heart. You see, for him, he has been served in such a great way. He's been rescued and the pit of despair in such a tremendous way that his natural response is to do the same. Caleb's life is an act of worship. And that act of worship is inspired by the sacred affection. Because of the love of Jesus, which has been shown to him, he can turn around and show it to other people. That's worship. And yet, he sings in his church praise team, okay? But his life is a song of praise, which is, in my opinion, far more important. When I see Caleb, this is what I think of. I think of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. It's holy and acceptable to God. And this is your reasonable act of Worship. That same Greek word, worship, service. It just makes sense. Because of what has been done, you turn around and do that for others. Caleb Grubb lives that. Now, remember, this morning, can you say that others can learn to love God the way that you love God just by watching your life? they learn how to worship in spirit and in truth by watching you. To be honest with you, some days I wonder about myself. I tell you what, I thank God for examples like Caleb. I thank God for examples like Keith Richards. I thank God for examples like Keith Richardson. Men who have shown me this bankrupt set what it looks like to affectionately and passionately worship Jesus with their life. The second thing 
that the scripture talks about in regards to worship is not just how we worship, but when we worship.